Hey everybody, Beyond the Veil, the next big Albion update has been released onto the public test server. And so in this video, I'm gonna be going over all of the things that are on there and all of the things that we know so far. So starting us off with the most anticipated update is the Mists of Avalon. So if you've been living under a rock, the Mists of Avalon are basically open world zones that are only accessible by solo players and by duo players. And just to note, the solo zones and the duo zones are separate, so there will be no duos in a solo zone. Starting with how to access the Mists, you have to enter by finding a Will-O-Wisp anywhere in the open world. So anywhere in the black zone or the yellow zone or the red zone or the roads of Avalon and even the Mists themselves have these Will-O-Wisps that spawn inside of them. And once you go beside one, they will run away from you a little bit and then open a portal and you can follow them into the Mists. These Will-O-Wisps can be different rarities and it basically just means like the rarity of the mist zone that you're going to go in. So the higher the rarity, it boosts like the rewards and the strength of the mobs in that zone. These mists can be both full loot PvP zones and non full loot PvP zones. If you enter through a blue or yellow zone, I think they're only yellow zones, but if you enter through a yellow zone, it will not be full loot. But if you enter through a black zone or a red zone, then it will be full loot. Just to note, the duo zones are always going to be full loot. Next, looking at the mechanics of these mist zones a little bit. Starting off, if you are in the mists, you're going to have a debuff on you that reduces your healing output by 20%, just basically weakening how much people can heal, and also reducing the maximum health your mount can have to 1500. So even if you're on a battle mount like I am here, you're still very easy to dismount. There's also no parting up in the mist, so you cannot team up with someone else. You can technically team up with them, but either you're not allowed to add them to your party. There's no party in the mist at all, so there will be things like friendly fire, making it much harder to sort of team up against other solo players. There's also no reputation loss for doing PvP in the mists, and the mist zones themselves are on a time limit. So once you enter a zone, it will close eventually. You can't stay in there forever. Eventually the mist will close and it will force you out, either booting you back to where you came from, or you can sort of progress to the next one as you go. Another unique mechanic to the mists is that instead of it taking 10 players or 11 players to make a red blob on the minimap, instead it only takes three players. So it's much easier to see where groups of players are. There is also no trading in the mists. Looking at the activities and what you do inside of the mists, well, it's basically just going to look like a normal open world, except mystified. So there will be things like mobs just hanging around, both the sort of aggressive mobs for fame farming, and also the mobs for like gathering and stuff like that. There will be gathering nodes, both enchanted and unenchanted, even gathering areas that have high densities of certain resources, etc, etc. I will note here that all of the sort of gathering mobs are missed versions of normal mobs. They're very similar. They have some new mechanics and stuff, but they won't drop anything special. They're just new types of mobs. Along with this, there's also some objectives that are either on the map or that spawn. So things like chests, like small chests that you'll see in the open world in the black zone now also spawn in the mist, as well as the special resource nodes that have a higher amount of resource and are usually enchanted. Along with this, there are some mist specific activities, like these mob camps that have sort of mini quests once you enter them. They'll make you defeat a certain amount of mobs or get a certain amount of fame threshold, and then they'll give you a reward once you do so. There's also these things called turbulent mists, which are basically like the mists version of power cores. They'll spawn on the map locked for a certain amount of time and you can go up to them. Once they unlock, you can pick them up. They'll take the place of your mount slot so you won't be able to mount up without dropping it. And you can take them to a specific location and drop them off for a reward. They're currently bugged at the time of recording this, so you can't actually drop them off, but I imagine they'll give uh, similar rewards to all the other stuff in the mists. As you run around, you will also see mobs that have captured wisps, and you can kill the mobs and then free the wisps by channeling onto their little cages to free them, again being rewarded with fame and some Brazilian standing, which we'll get into in a second. There are also unstable portals that spawn. I've only seen them spawn in the duo ones, but I'm pretty sure they can spawn in the solo ones as well. Basically, if you enter them, they're a one-way portal to anywhere. They just shoot you out somewhere random else in the game. You don't know where you're going to go and you cannot enter back. 
There are also some unmarked areas on the map. These are going to be very similar. You can go to them. They'll be very similar to the other sort of objectives on the map, like the mob camps or the gathering areas, except they're unmarked and slightly weaker, less rewards, and smaller. Also in the mists are three new types of mobs, a griffin, veil weaver, and fey dragon. These are super rare, I didn't see a single one while I was roaming the mists, but apparently they are there and you can kill them and they will drop the artifacts needed to craft the new armors. Last thing to talk about within the mist is Brazilian standing. So as you do activities in the mists, you will gain Brazilian standing. This seems to be a sort of reputation system unique to the mists. This is not in the patch notes at all and it hasn't been in a dev talk, so we're not exactly sure all what is used for this, but you can see it in your stats page. You start out as neutral and you can go up to like friendly and above that as well. Along with the mists comes a new town which is named Brazilian. Brazilian is a town only accessible through the mists of Avalon. So while you're exploring the mists, you can find portals to Brazilian that sort of randomly open up in front of you. In order to find one, you very likely need to have the friendly standing or greater in the Brazilian standing. I've never heard of anyone getting it with neutral standing, so I believe you need to at least get the 50k points, get up to the friendly standing before you can find one, but that seems to be the only sort of prerequisite. In terms of the town itself, the town is pretty much just a normal looking town. It's got a market and a bank and an artifact foundry and plots to make stations and all the other sort of stuff that you'd expect to see in a town. For you crafters out there, the crafting bonuses in Brazilian are capes, bags, and potions. Potions, by the way, were taken off of Carillion in this patch as well. Once you're in Brazilian, to exit and enter again. To exit, you can either go back into the mists again. You can choose which type of mist zone you want to go to, so non-lethal, lethal, or duo, and it will shoot you out into a random one of those mists. Or you can go into an unstable portal that will sort of shoot you out randomly, I think, into a road of Avalon. Both of these have a cooldown on them, so if you get put into a mist and you don't like it, you can go right back, but you will be on cooldown for 5 minutes before you can exit the town again and go to another mist. So you can't just keep going to a random mist over and over and over again until you find a good one. To get back to Brazilian, I could not figure out a way to set home, however it seems like you can just teleport back there whenever you want, as long as you've been there once. Now you cannot take any gear with you to or from Brazilian when you fast travel, so it's like clearly on in that way, but if you're naked you seem to have free transport to and from, even without your home set. Something unique to Brazilian is a second player owned island, so if you already have an island, you can buy another one in Brazilian. This island is basically just a completely normal island, except it looks like the mists, but in terms of upgrading it and what's on the island and all that, it's basically exactly the same as a normal island. This island is also completely separate from your other island, so there is no sharing of levels or anything like that. Lastly, for Brazilian, it is attached to a sort of mini continent, so you can actually go out of the Brazilian town like you would any other town in Albion, and it is attached to some normal sort of zones, although they're sort of mystified. There are both yellow and red zones attached to it, and there seems to be at least three or four. There's no map attached to these, like you can't see in the world map where you are, so I don't exactly know the layout or how many there are, but I've seen at least a fair amount. If you try to party up with someone in Brazilian or in these zones around it, it gives you a sort of error. So I'm guessing it has the same mechanics as the normal mists where you cannot party up with anybody. However, if you do attack people, if you hard flag up in like the yellow zone or the red zones here and attack people outside of this Brazilian town, then you do lose reputation as normal. Along with the mists being added in this patch, the roads of Avalon are also getting a little rework. I will mention here on the test server the roads didn't seem to be fully updated, they still seem to be missing a little bit of stuff and be a little bit buggy, but there was a fair amount that we can get from it. 
So basically the Roads of Avalon got the Lands Awaken treatment where all the mobs just level up over time, they start weak and then they level up if they're not killed, and open world objectives like special gathering nodes and crystal spiders, chests, power cores, ava treasure zones, all that stuff can spawn in the roads now, along with things like solo dungeons and corrupted dungeons. So they're a lot more like the open world now. Along with this, the objectives or the chests in the Roads of Avalon have been slightly reworked. They're no longer on the map. You don't see a green chest or a blue chest or a yellow chest on the map now. They don't actually show at all. The areas are still there and you have to go towards them to see what they're like and they act very similar to how the new static dungeons do. So if there's a boss there, you'll see like a little icon on the minimap when you get close to it and they will get harder over time as the mobs level up. To sort of compensate for this leveling up bonus that you have in the roads, the 610% loot bonus that used to exist in the roads is now gone. So now it's just normal blacks on loot. So for example, the static group dungeons that were in the roads are still there, but they don't give the 610% loot anymore. Instead, they will level up over time and get those like butterflies on them. The static solo dungeons that used to be in the roads, I don't believe are there anymore. I didn't see any. And with the existence of normally spawning solo dungeons in the roads, I'm pretty sure they've been removed. Also, another thing that has been added is a special raid regions. So instead of seeing like those yellow chest areas with the super high, really hard mobs, those have been removed and replaced into special raid regions. Now these weren't on the test server or I could just never find them one, they must be super rare, but basically they are now only connected to hideout zones and will have bigger portals allowing for greater numbers to go in them and they'll have the raid level activities for those larger groups to do. Because of the bigger portals and only connected to hideout zones, they can also be used for the sort of hideout fights and zone fights that happen in the roads. Other changes that I noticed to the roads, the blue portals now only have six charges total instead of seven, and a couple things in the patch notes, Hideouts can now become headquarters in the roads, making it much safer to have a hideout in the roads. You can make sure that it doesn't get destroyed and you can no longer log out in the roads without a severe penalty. So there's no AFK alternate account scouting good roads and looking for good connections and just logging out and having their mains come and find them. That's been removed because you get a heavy penalty if you log out in the roads and you get kicked out when you log back in. Another thing added with this patch, as I mentioned in the mist, there is new mobs that drop new artifacts to make new armor. So there's three new sets of armor, one for cloth, one for leather, one for plate, and then also mercenary shoes have been reworked, so I'll add those into this section as well. So starting off with the cloth armor, the face scale stuff. So on the helmet, you have an ability called Hyper Focused, which will buff you for five seconds, making you immune to any sort of debuff and making all of your channels uninterruptible. The chest piece is a complete wall of text, uh, but basically when you activate it, it will cycle through three abilities, a fire a lightning and a frost ability, and you can reactivate it to select one of them. The fire ability will create a ring of fire around you that deals damage over time and fears enemies. The lightning storm shield increases your damage resistances and then will stun and deal damage to anything that attacks you during the time. Lastly, the frost one will summon five frozen fragments around you and whenever you do direct damage to an enemy, one will fly out and do damage to it as well. The cloth shoes give you an ability called ethereal form. After one second, you turn into ethereal form, becoming untargetable and immune to damage and all abilities, increasing your moves by 20% while channeling for up to six seconds. If you pass through an enemy player in ethereal form, you gain an extra stack of move speed up to four times. Moving on to the Mistwalker gear, which is the leather set, starting with the helmet. The helmet's ability is called Immortal. When activated, you are buffed for four seconds, and during that buff, you are unable to drop below one HP. For the chest piece, once activated, you will turn into a mist cloud with a seven meter radius around you, granting immunity to all effects, and any allies within that seven meter radius also become invisible. Lastly, for the Mistwalker shoes, you activate them to dash forward to a position, leaving a after image where you cast them from, and you can recast the ability within four seconds to teleport back to that after image. Just note, if you move too far away, it will break. 
Last is the Dusk Weaver set, which is your plate armor set. Starting with our helmet, you have a combo ability with two moves. So first, you shoot out a spider's thread that will attach to an enemy, dealing a little bit of magic damage and slowing them a little bit if they are not mounted. And then again, if they are not mounted, it allows for the second part of the ability, which is to dash to the enemy that's stuck with your thread. For the chest ability, you place down a web and seven meter radius under you. It will slow enemies by 35% and purges all of their speed buffs. Lastly, for the Dusk Weaver boots, you dash in a targeted direction, knocking all enemies you pass through forward and dealing a little bit of damage. If a knocked back enemy collides with terrain like a wall, they will be stunned. Lastly, I'm also going to add in the Mercenary Shoes here, which have been reworked to have a new ability. Their new ability is called Break Free. It will cleanse all crowd control effects and dash towards a targeted position. This can be used while you are stunned or silenced, so it's basically a cleanse and a dash combined. Last but not least for big changes added in this patch, we have a new enchantment tier of Pristine, which is 0.4. So now instead of the highest tier gear being 8.3, you can actually get up to 8.4. So you cannot upgrade gear from 0.3 to 0.4. I believe you have to craft it right away to 0.4. To get those 0.4 materials, you have two options. The first way is to transmute 0.3 material at one of the stations, so you can pay some money to transmute a 0.3 material into a 0.4 material, or there are new open world nodes for resources that spawn in the black zone. Again, I couldn't find any of these, I'm not sure if they're being implemented yet, but basically they work like the other special nodes in the open world, except with two key differences. One is that you can see them from farther away, so if you're like a map away, you can see it in the next map, similar to like a chest or something and then second they are also locked for a bit similar to power cores and chests and stuff like that again so you cannot go and gather it right away. I will add in here as well you can actually now use the faction hearts for another use you can now use them as a material in the refining process so for example if you want to make an 8.4 leather you can either use five 8.4 hides or four 8.4 hides and one heart for hide in this case it would be a beast heart but if you're doing something like wood it would be a tree heart Last, other notable changes, I only really see one. The enchantment on special resource nodes can now be seen on the minimap, so if you hover over one of those special nodes in the open world on the minimap, you can now see exactly what it is. I also forgot there's also a new little inspect tab, so if you inspect someone, you can instantly see the skills that they have set without having to click on all their gear, which is super nice. Anyways, that is all the most notable changes coming and everything we really know coming to the next big patch in Beyond the Veil. There's probably still a little bit more to come out. I might make another video if some more info comes out or a new patch notes or things get fixed. But for now, that is all we know. I hope you enjoyed this and found it helpful and uh, do all the things you do in the videos if you did. Right.